okay, we want to thank you for uh, tuning in with us this morning. Um, this morning we're going to start um, talking about reading XML with FME. Uh, my name is Don Murray, and I'm the president, and I'm here with... Dean Hintz uh, uh, from Pro Services. Okay. And Dean's um, joining in from our Bulgarian office this morning. And I'm also here to answer questions with, uh, with Mark Stokes, who leads our professional services group, and um, with Juan Chu Chow, who leads the XML development team. So um, as we go through, please do ask questions. We have all the experts on hand. Okay, with that, we'll get started. The first thing we want to mention is, is that um, stay tuned. Um, at the end of this presentation, there's a chance to win 40 free seats for an FME and Reading XML online training course. That'll be held on May 16th. It's a half-day course. And um, so it's going to go into a lot more detail than we're able to do here in the uh, 50 minutes that we have. Okay. So first we're going to open with some, some polls. Um, and I'll get Mark to pull up the first poll. Okay. And um, the first question is, um, what version uh, do you, of FME do you use? Okay. So how's the poll, Mark? Have you launched that poll? Look right there. So Mark's... Mark's going to launch the poll. So, um, so yeah, so go ahead and vote. We, and again, the question is, what um, FME version do you use? Okay. And we'll wait until, uh, okay, the votes, are, the votes are coming in. And um, I can see uh, many of you are, have been using FME for about two years, um, some le many less than one. So right now, most of you have used FME for less than one year. And um, a full 20% of you have not used FME at all. Um, XML. Oh, you launched the wrong poll. Oh well, so so we we're, we're doing the one about how long you've been working with that XML. So anyway, that was the second question. Sorry about that. Um, so 20% of you don't work on with XML. 34% um, less than a year, and some of you've been using yes. XML for yeah. So we'll close that poll, and um, and then we'll sh show the results. So thank you for for filling that one in. That gives us a great idea on. Um, on the level of uh, expertise with um, with XML. So the second poll I think we're going to do right away here is really the first poll, and that's um, what version of FME do you use? So um, what version of FME are you using? Okay. So go ahead, launch that, Mark. It would be nice if these poll questions were actually in order, but hey, it help. yeah, <laughs> it's early here. So um, anyway, so here, please answer that one. What version of FME are you using? And um, we'll let that run for a bit here. And um, yeah, so wow, a lot of you have been using, I, right now you're using FME 2011. 32% are using FME 2012. Okay, so we'll close that. And uh, there you can see the results. So um, a lot of you have taken um, it's 2012, so you're a lot of early adopters, and 10% of you currently do not use um, FME. So, so thanks for, for to those folks. Um, thanks for joining in. Um, well, for everybody, but but those folks, we're gonna um, give a really high level overview here of what FME can do with XML. So this is not going to turn into an FME training course, and um, indeed the things we're going to show with XML really is really is a survey. So, uh, so there you go. So there's the uh, two poll questions. Okay. Um, just to look at the agenda very quickly on all the places we're finding XML in use, and then we're going to look at a number of different um, um, samples of XML, and we'll, we're going to do a number of really quick demos. Um, they're about five minutes each, just to give you an idea, a flight feel for, for what it's like working with XML with, uh, with FME. Okay. And um, um, what's FME about? Really, it's the, where we talk about powering the flow of spatial data. And those are all the different types of data that we work with. And you can see one of the uh, bubbles there is XML. So, and of course, XML is used to carry a lot of these different types of data. So you know, um, BIM, for example, CityGML, that's a type of XML. Um, AIXM is another type. So there's lots of 3D formats, lots of point formats, and there's lots of just sort of what we call arbitrary XML data sets that are floating around that are written by you know, any number of applications. And um, we just focus on moving the data. Okay, so um, the importance of XML. Um, in the early days, we got uh, started with XML for uh, projects really was all around spatial. GML and Inspire out of Europe is, um, 
the one that really is is uh, driving a lot of the work we do. In 2013, we actually have a new Inspire reader. Um, so if you're working with Inspire data, give that a try, and be sure to give us feedback on you know what you would like changed and how we can improve that, and make that even easier for you to work with Inspire data. Okay. Next, of course, um, the point is um, well, we're talking about XML here. We push GML underneath the XML umbrella because, of course, GML is XML with um, you know geometric primitives identified. And um, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about XML data, GML data. We're also going to talk about XML data with GML geometry only. So XML documents, which they just borrow the GML geometric primitives. Okay. And of course, um, many, many devices, we're starting to, um, as you, you may, if you see the current blog or you, you take a look at our FMEpedia site, you'll see that um, we're talking more and more with sensors and things like that. And, and one of them, the popular formats for, for sharing data between devices and sensors and web applications is, of course, XML. So, so that's where we're seeing it there. So the use of XML really is exploding. Sensors, there's more and more sensors coming online. We're not going to talk much about sensors here, but um, suffice it to say that XML, again, is one of the popular ways that these sensors um, distribute data. The OGC, which is the Open Geospatial Consortium, of course, they have a number of sensor um, standards, and all of those are using XML, or sorry, GML, to uh, move the data. So there you go there. Um, and of course, many applications, they store their data or share data via XML documents. Okay. So first, of, um, the next poll question, okay, is do you currently use FME for FME XML? No, nope, we asked. Um, oh, yeah. 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 So slightly different. We just want to see how many people are currently using FME for XML. And then uh, this is uh, And that would be uh, done either uh, the general XML reader, or it could be any of the profile readers, like uh, that's correct. Inspire Good point, Dean. So it could be the um, yeah. So it could be the Inspire. It could be AXM. Could be Top Ten. Could be Top Ten NL. Top Fifty NL. City GML. Um, anything that is uh, an XML format. Okay, we're going to close that here, and we're going to show the. Uh, okay, so um, twenty-five percent of you do. 33% of you don't, and the remainder said no, but I uh, plan to in the, in the future. Okay. Was there a fourth choice, or did you? There was no, <laughs> there was no fourth choice, so you're kind of forced to in the future. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, that's, a very, that's what you call an optimistic goal. We know everybody wants to use FME for XML, and so uh, there you go. Okay. So, um, so of course, no release of, of FME is complete without making XML easier. Um, each release has been uh, been better. We were really excited when we released FME 2011 about how easy it made XML, and 2012 has really stepped that up even higher. Okay, so um, um, just a little bit. Our, our strategy with XML at Safe is like it is with with many things. Um, there's a twofold strategy. The first one is if you are an XML expert using XSLT or XQuery, um, we have transformers or the ability for you to use those within FME. Okay, we're not going to talk about those complex technologies this morning. Either. I just wanted to make sure that you knew that that capability was there. Okay. The second strategy is removing the need as much as we can for you to use those technologies. And all the demos I'm going to do this morning require no use of XQuery and um, XF Maps. Okay. So we make it easy. Okay, so strategy one, there's just some of the things that if you sign up for the, the half-day course, those topics will be discussed. And um, you'll see things on, on those, OK? And here are just some of the transformers that you can use to get access to XQuery, um, X, you know, an XML, XML feature mappers, things like that for XF maps. There's also an XSLT transformer, so you can embed XSLT in your workspace, OK? So making it easy. Um, in, F, in FME 2011, you know, it was easy. In FME 2012, this is what we call having fun. I know on a Friday night, um, you know, I haven't gotten my wife to do this yet, but sometimes I'll look and I'll say, hey, she says, what do you want to do? I'll say, hey, why don't we just, um, you know, play with a little bit of, uh, with FME and some XML. And um, it's, it's that much fun. Um, she hasn't taken me up on it yet, but uh, there you go. So the first um, thing is that we have a number of new XML-based formats. So 
um, AIXM 5.1 reader. Um, there's a funny story here. I didn't really think we were going to do AIXM 5.1 for uh, FME 2012, but uh, the enthusiast Juan actually um, took, sort of took the banner himself and just made it happen by doing some amazing, uh, some amazing work. So we're um, and I'm going to show that one. Um, this morning here very quickly. And then uh, Inspire, if you're in Europe and you have to work with Inspire data, what we did is we, we um, took the GML reader, put a, a layer around it to give the Inspire schemas in a, a more easy to understand way for a typical user. Now we want feedback on that, so uh, please do give us feedback as you use it, what you would like, how you'd like the teachers represented and things like that. We're pretty excited about that one. The Origin Survey has a new vector map uh, XML format. We added that. And to go along with top 10 NL, we've added top 50 NL. And, um, and so uh, if you've come up with, if you have some top 100 NL or top 500 NL or whatever, um, let us know. Because again, um, give, getting us the data sets is key for us to, uh, to, to work with this stuff. Okay. So here's just, I don't expect you to be able to read this, but here out of the box are the formats. If you go into the format gallery and type XML, here are all the ones that are sort of pre-canned. And um, of course, you'll see GML in there, and you'll see this raw XML in there, and those will you do some of that as well. Okay. So I guess it's time for a demo. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with... Um, some AIXM data, okay? So the point of this one is I'm not going to use any transformers. Um, I'm just going to show you what you can do straight out of the box with the, the settings box once you specify AIXM. So right away it recognizes as XML, but I'm going to say it's AIXM, and I'm going to go in here. And really you'll see there's a number of... Um, different options in the viewer. So initially I'm going to and I'm going to focus on two of them. The first one is this feature properties map embedded objects as initially the default geometries I'm going to leave that. But what I'm going to do down here is I'm just going to say data set only. Okay. So when we actually use FME to do transformations, if I just want to work with one data set or I have a data set that's representative of my data source that I'm going to get, I can simply say data set only or I could say data set only with attributes merged from the, the schema document, which would take all the schema information from the, the XSD document and put it onto those feature types that are in the data set. If I wanted to make a, a uh, workspace that, had, that covered the entire AIXM schema, um, I would just say, hey, don't, don't use the input data to generate your, your document. Just use the schema. Okay, but for this morning, I'm going to use data set only and I'm going to say OK, and now the FME is going to um, read that data, and it's going to um, um, show that here. Now, an interesting thing, we take performance at safe very seriously, so this task I'm doing here is actually um, three times faster, or takes a third the time about in the service pack one, which is out in, in, in a couple of weeks. So, so you know, that's, um, you know, at safe we treat performance very, very seriously, and so the, the uh, process of, of doing that um, never stops. So here we go. We can see the, the AXM data. And if I click on something, you're going to see um, attributes here. And you're going to see the attributes for the geometries as traits down here. Now, this um, is the air spaces that were there. If I turn the air space off and I zoom in, you can actually see that, in fact, this is the Chicago airport. Okay, And you can see... Um, everything you need to go there. So that's that's one. Now that this is uh, using our our trait rep. This is probably the truest representation of the document, but perhaps it's not the most easy if I'm going to a traditional GIS. So there's two others, um, and so we'll go back here. I'm going to select the parameters again, and this time I'm going to go by feature types. And what this is going to do is this is going to pull the feature the the uh, things with geometry out into their own attributes, and that's going to normalize the other thing. So this makes it really easy for me to go to a database. I could push the, the spatial tables to one spot and the non-spatial tables to someplace else, and you'll see the difference. I'm going to have a few extra feature types on the side. You're going to see under airspace time slice, you're going to see um, volume now. Okay, so, so Don, I'm going to turn uh, that off. How would you link those up uh, if you if you read them as uh, into separate feature types? Are they linked in some ah, way? Great point, Dean. Great point. You'll see there's a GML parent ID. 
So um, as these things are pulled apart, there's there's keys that are put into the uh, into the feature type. So we can if we when we do split these into different cables, we're able to um, specify the keys to link these together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the thing here to note is so great, great question is um, that the geometries themselves are separate. So now if I look at time slice, so I'll turn all these off and I'll quickly look at time slice, you're going to see that um, the time slice has attributes, but it doesn't have any of the, um, any of the geometry. It's merely going to the geometry is going to point back up to, uh, to that. Okay, so that's that one. One last way, and this is the way if you're going to mid or you know, a really simple format, and you just want to get something that's going to um, uh, get in there very, very easily with minimal amount of work. So I haven't used any, I'd specify attributes in this case, and this is going to flatten things out and um, pull the attribution off the geometries. And again, this is going to zip by pretty quick here, and I'm going to see my, my uh, Chicago airport area. And if I click on an airspace volume or a taxiway, um, you're going to see that it's got a nice clean geometry with all the attributes pushed up. And, um, and last but not least, what I'll do, so here we go. I'll turn off the airspace time slice because, hey, I like zooming into the airport. Because um, that's, hey, as we travel, we know that's where we spend most of our time. And so, so and I'll click on um, this one here, and you'll see that there's the, um, the air apron element there. And you can see the geometry is nice and simple. And, um, and so now if I go out to, um, if I use that, and I go out to, um, to MIF mid here it is. So what I did here is I have a very simple trans, uh, a very simple workspace. I'll open it, but I won't actually um, run it, um, just in the interest of time. Okay, so there we go, very simple. Okay, and now if I open that, in MIF mid, you're going to see that I have everything that I need, um, and we'll select them all. And sort of going to MIF mid or something simple, I have a very, I got the information that I need. So this is it demonstrates again how easy it is to start to work with uh, AXM. So there we go. There's the MIF mid with its attributes. Again, zoom in to the um, turn off the time slice and go down to the airport here. I'll click on the terminal building. And here we go. OK, click on the building. And you'll see it has all the attributes there. And um, it's a terminal building. Such and such. So there you go. So that's, um, that's the first, uh, first demo. Obviously, we could spend a lot of time on that one, um, that one uh, document um, type. but Hey, um, that gives you an idea of, of how easy it is to start to get going with XML. And in this case, it was AIXM. Okay, so I think Dean, are you going to do a quick? Um, are you going to do a quick yeah. Inspire thing? I, I love working with Inspire so much that uh, I, I don't think I can wait any longer. So okay, you, I know I could tell. I, you kept I, I, sending me those texts saying, "When do I get to go? When do I get to go?" So here you go, Dean. So take it away, and there you go. So hopefully, yeah, we can see your share your screen. Okay, you can see me all right there. All right, yes. so I have some uh, uh, protected areas data here. And uh, there you go, that's the, um, the uh, GML. And so how, how, what, how are we going to work with this? And I know everybody from Europe uh, likes Inspire, but we will teach you to uh, love Inspire uh, because we'll make it that much easier to work with. So I'm just right-clicking on it and say view with uh, FME viewer and uh, it comes up uh, with the Inspire reader but uh, it's in the uh, format gallery and we're going to leave it as fragments but the the trick here is there's this is new I believe it uh, um, this might be a service pack one thing where you, you can now change the uh, angle brackets or these these brackets here that you can get with uh, if you have lists so if you have a series sometimes those can be a little bit tough to pull apart so we can just replace those with an empty string and I don't even have to specify schema or anything and you'll notice that I'm also using data set only and that's it so it just goes away and reads all my uh, protected sites 
uh, data from uh, our friends up in uh, Sweden. And now I can click on uh, one of these areas here. We'll zoom in a little bit. And uh, can you see my full uh, screen width there? Yeah, it um, all looks great. Yeah. yeah, it all looks great. So if I if I scroll down, the neat thing about this is uh, now we can't really simplify the data structure because that's just the the name of the game with uh, Inspire. But you can see that this particular area has multiple protected entities. And so instead of a list structure, which in FME you might have to use a list indexer to get them out, now all of these fields just come out as protected entity one, two, three, four. And you can okay. just push those through a, uh, uh, an attribute copier or schema mapper, however you want to pull that stuff apart. And I could Perfect. just go ahead and save this as a tab file or whatever I want, and I don't have to. I don't even need a workspace anymore. Great. You can see also all of the IDs and stuff are embedded in the geometry. If, if you need yeah. that sort of thing. excellent. Okay, so, thanks, Dean. That's uh, very good there. And I'm going to take that back from you now. So just showing you how so this, is, this might be the only time, Dean, I'm able to to do that with you. That's just a lot of power. You got to say, eh, Mark. Absolutely. <laughs> So I'm going to now make myself the presenter, and um, okay, so here we go. You have been show my screen, and back we go. So there we go. We had two quick demos showing the power of these new uh, built-in formats, and um, there's a third one called City GML, which we're very proud of. We have sort of the defining City GML data set that we were that that we got. And what we've done for FME 2012 is just make it very easy. Now, of course, in the interest of time, we're not going to bring that up. But this is just basically pick a city GML data set point and shoot, and away you go. So a number of views. This one here shows the high-level view. Now, if we turn some layers off in the, in the viewer, you actually see the tunnels underneath. So, so that um, you know, just sort of shows you how rich, wow. um, yeah, how rich. Uh, the city GML is and, and what we're reading. So we're pretty pr proud of that one. If you have city GML data, give it a try. And um, we're pretty confident that you're going to like what you, uh, you get out of that. OK, so now on to metadata documents. And we're going to go into another dem quick demo here. Um, so metadata is a type of data that more and more, it's typically an XML document. There's a number of standards. And with FME, you don't really have to worry about the standards. Um, if you have a metadata document, we can read it. And so I'm going to um, to do that uh, now. Okay. So um, again, here I have. Um, let's go to my next XML demo. Reading metadata and uh, data, and um, of course that's safe. We've never metadata we haven't liked. So there you go. There's a good joke for you. A terrible joke, but uh, one that I never get tired of. So if we look at this metadata document in um, Notepad++, we see that the high-level tag is metadata. Okay, so if I want to read that, um, this time I'll use um, FME Workbench just for fun. Okay, I'm just going to um, say that this is an XML document this time. It's definitely not AIXM. XML, okay, and I'm going to pop this up and I'm going to say feature paths. That's what I want to do here. You can see I could do XF maps, but that's for another day. And I'm simply going to paste. Ooh, not that one in there. I'm going to paste md, md underscore meta data, like that. Um, flatten options. I am going to flatten it because I want to blow it apart. And I always do this um, just because I like more rather than less. And um, it's not necessary there, but that's just called a bad habit. And um, here I'm just going to say no because really we're not um, worried about where we're going. We can go anywhere if we can blow it apart. and. Um, so now I'm going to have one feature. I'm going to connect this to a data inspector. I'm going to run this, and you're going to see when I click on um, show me the features with no geometry that, in fact, I have the metadata document um, completely flat. OK, so, so you know, and, and if I wanted to pick out one particular field out of the metadata document, that might be, um, I, this might be sufficient. But what if I want to split the metadata document into a number of tables? OK. Again, we're going to go back to Workbench. Let's get rid of that one. Um, back to Workbench here. I'm going to uh, add a reader again, XML. OK. And here, remember, now on, data. There we go. 
And this time I'm going to, uh, looking at the document, I can see under metadata I have contacts. So I'm going to grab the contact. I also have something called identification info. I want to grab that. I want to grab distribution info. And I want to grab data quality. So I want those four things as um, tables. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply specify those contacts, identification info. Just, and Juan's going to let me know if I mistype something. Info. Yeah, and identification I quality an extra info. Hand. Ah, look at that. Thanks, guys. I'm glad I made that joke. Identification. Identification. That one there? The second letter. I -N. I -N. There we go. Thanks, guys. And so I say OK. And um, again, if I look at the flattening, it remembered it from last time. So um, that's what I want. OK, OK. And that's going to spin that up. And just to make sure that, yeah, there we go. We've got five feature types. And I get rid of this one here. Delete that one because I don't want it anymore. And we're going to route these to inspectors. Okay. So again, what we're doing here is we're just starting to play with our data to find a representation that uh, is easy to understand. Once we have that, moving it to um, any of the formats that FME supports is very, very simple. Now if I select them, you're going to see, in fact, there's my um, identification record. Okay, there's my distribution, there's my data quality, and there's my responsible parties in the contact. Okay, and um, yeah, and uh, and there's yeah the, met the, met the entire metadata record um, as before. Okay, so just one more thing, um, one more time, we're going to do this. Um, this time, what I'm going to whoops. This time, what I'm going to do is there's a repeating group in there that I actually um, want to sp split out, okay? So and uh, Don, how, how, would you might, how might you notice there's a repeating group uh, if you were looking uh, at, at, your out, out, at your output in the viewer? How do you see right. a repeating group? Sure, you're going to see a list here. So is this one I want here? Yeah, so let me expand this. Hopefully I have enough room. And you're that's part of the trick is how, how do you decide how to slice that XML? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That is the trick. So it's in data, is it in data quality. No. Is it in distribution info? No, it's not there either. Is it, is it, nah, there it is. You can there see you the go. CI citation data got 0, 1, 2. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to pull those CI citation dates apart. Okay. And put them in their own table. And so that's what I'm going to do now. So again, I go back to our beloved uh, FME, and this time I'll do it this way. I'll delete the reader. Yes, you can turn that up. And I'll get rid of those. Okay, delete good reader. Add reader, and the nice thing is it remembers. Okay, help me iterate here. And this time, um, I would, you know, I, what I do is I just specify the path down there. But in the interest of time, I've already uh, written this down. CI underscore citation slash date slash ci underscore date. Okay. So you can see that that's in the um, in the file here if I expand that out. Okay. You can see the ci citation date right here. Okay. So I'm going to grab those ones there. Okay. So now I say okay and I should have an extra feature type. If I don't have an extra feature type that means one of two things. Either that is not in the data set, or I mistyped my path. But you can see here I have CI date, so I obviously did that correct. And so now I run this again. OK, connect to the date the inspectors. And now you can see that I've been able to, now I've effectively normalized that. I had a repeating group in an object, and I pulled that out. Now I would have multiple records in my date table that would each point back to the, uh, the other table that um, that owns that date. So and we'll see that when I get to the dates. Okay, where's the date? There's a date. And again, the GML parent ID is going to tell me which of the identification records that it belongs. So I'm able to push this into uh, a number of tables. So there we go. That is the, the XML reading um, 
of metadata documents. Now, if I wanted to update a metadata document or write a metadata document, um, come next week we're going to talk about how you can easily update individual fields in a metadata document or write a new one from, uh, um, from, a, from samples or from a schema. Okay. So now um, it's kind of going to go back to you pretty quick, Dean. What about arbitrary data sets? Often we find we just get an XML document. Um, there may not even be a schema. Um, there could just be that there's a program out there that they're spitting out XML and they want people to read it. Um, FME is able to, to do that as well very, very easily. And um, Dean, this is just a, uh, sort of illustrates the, the thing here. And Dean's going to do an example now. So I better give it back to you, Dean. And you're going to do this in five minutes or less, Dean assures me. Yes. That, uh, so this is, um, okay. So Dean, I'm going to make you the presenter. And okay. So take yes. it away, Dean. And share right, your okay. screen there, good guy. Okay, so you've got that cooking timer going. Yeah, there we go. The cooking you know, timer is going. Yeah. Okay. I, I have I have a very simple data set here, uh, which I think it helps uh, in terms of learning uh, how to how to do this stuff. Because often, what will happen when you're working with XML, somebody will just send you something, and you have to figure out how am I going to make uh, features out of this? Uh, because we do have this problem that, uh, as you can see, in XML it can be very nested, and we're trying to make Typically in GIS, we have relational features, so you have one row in a table that holds the information. So here you can see I have John from Vancouver uh, with this from to date and these uh, coordinates, and so that's not very very flat. So how am I going to read that? Well, first off, I'm just going to open this again with uh, Workbench, and and the first thing I have to do is decide again what feature types I want. So I want to get the contractor and I also want these coordinates. So those two things are what I want. And I don't, I'm not doing Inspire anymore, unfortunately. All right, so I'm going to match on contractor and cord. Actually not coordinates, but just cord, because I want to get one uh, feature per coordinate. And as usual, flatten everything and pull in those ans the uh, ancestor information. That will help me link everything up in a minute. We'll see. So that's it. And we'll just go to, well, I think that's the sake of argument. And so it spins away and reads those two feature types. And if, again, if I misspelled, then you would notice uh, maybe you missed one of them. So the coordinate is pretty easy because really all I want from there is an ID and a lat long. And so what I'll do is I'll add a 2D um, point adder. And I'll just uh, dial up the um, long and the lat. And I guess if I step to the um, redirect it to my inspector, you'll see some, some points. because they don't actually have the information we need uh, in terms of the label. So we've got uh, a couple of contractors with different uh, service areas and we want to know, okay, how do I link all those up? So to do that, I go back up here and all I have to do is use a feature merger. I'll make the contractors the requester. And uh, I don't need these uh, points anymore, so I'm going to actually drop that. And how do I link them? Well, I'm actually going to use build lines from points because I want to show how we make a, an aggregate feature. And it's this coordinate box ID that happens to link them. And I also need to change duplicate suppliers to yes. Otherwise, I only get one point. And that's basically it. So when I rerun this, What I should see is, and I should just have a line, and now it's per contract here. Each contract model that basically defines the area that they're working. And so if I go, there's the city, and uh, somewhere in here is the name. So that's June, and this is John in Vancouver. And I guess the last step, the, the, the intent of this was a 
uh, bounding box to show the service area for each contractor. So I'm using some uh, geometry generation method of FFP. So you can see what's going on here in XML. Uh, then we use some uh, and relates between the various XML records we've read, and then we may have some downstream uh, geometry processing to actually generate the geometry we want for the output. And, Great. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, basically yeah. it. No, so, that's good, Dean. So yeah. this is going one step, yeah, one step beyond just grabbing points. We're just showing yeah. that uh, you can actually yeah. join uh, related tables and build. Uh, larger geometries out of it. Yeah, yeah. No, that's great. And that shows, um, Dean just touched on um, some of the transformers that are in FME. And um, if you want to learn more about FME, we have a weekly overview webinar that t dives into, you know, the whole flow of, of, of FME. But uh, suffice it to say, there's many of these transformers that enable you not just to read the XML, but also move it, restructure it, join it with other data or other things within the XML document to get the data to um, the users the way that they want it or to your application the way that you need it. So I'm going to take the presentership back now, Dean. Okay. Thanks, no, thanks for that. Cool. That was uh, great. And you actually did it on time. So um, we're, we're, what we're going to do is um, you're getting a standing ovation here, but we're going to mail you a muffin. We have muffins oh. here. So we're going to we're, okay. yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna send it ground. But uh, in a little yeah. while now, you're going to get that, these muffins. And, and they're very sure. good. I heard they're made with lard. So um, they're very tasty. <laughs> Okay. Make sure they're vacuum packed. Okay. That's right. That's right. Okay. So we're moving right along here. Um, what about XML with GML geometry? Um, we were running an, uh, what we call the XML challenge, which we're still running. So if anybody has XML documents out there that they're having trouble with, please do um, email them to us. We're going to give you the, the email address of those. But during this XML challenge, um, I was sent a document. Somebody said, here's a GML document. Um, FME can't read it. And so we looked at it. I sent it over to Juan, um, and Juan says, well, it's not really GML. It's an XML document, but what they did is they just borrowed the GML geometric primitives and put that inside the XML. And it um, turns out that, that we're seeing that more and more. The OGC has gone to a great deal of effort to define a nice uh, geometric um, primitives that represent pretty much any geographic object. And so just using that to um, within XML is a good thing. And AIXM, for example, they also have done that. They have some uh, GML geometry types right within the AIXM. So there we go. Anyway, so what I'm going to show now, and so the story is with the FME 2011, we couldn't do it. With FME 2012, we can do it. And I'm going to quickly show you how we can, uh, we can do that here now. OK, so there we go. OK, so here we go. Let's go back to our data sets. Um, XML demos, and this is XML with GML geometry. So I have uh, a sample file here. I can't show the real data, so we've munged this one up. But um, you can see that it's definitely not GML for those that know what the top level GML should be. But what they've done is when they've needed coordinates, they actually borrowed the GML geometry type. So there's one right there. And um, OK, the, X, the, the GML ge reader is not going to work, but of course I can use the uh, XML reader. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this with Workbench. And the thing we, OK, so, and uh, the trick here is, um, first I'll flatten just because for fun. The thing we want on this is stand, OK? If I go to the top, you'll notice that stand, this file is a whole bunch of stands. OK, well, this one's small for demo purposes, but there's two stands. And so the stand is what I want. So what I'm going to do initially is I'm just going to um, specify, let's flatten that, just because that's all we've been doing today. And it, um, you know, it just works. So, um, but here you're going to see why um, we don't always flatten, because it isn't always what you want to do. OK? So and again, it doesn't really matter where we're going. If we have more time to go to KNO and have a bit of fun. But hey, we're just going to have fun just with the raw reading. And that's some. Um, so now if I connect a visualizer here, a data inspector, and we run this, and we look at the coordinates, you're going to see that um, um, they've, they've been flattened out. And so they're not particularly going to be easy for me to get at, OK? Um, and understand that actually this is a surface, OK? So that's, um, there we go there. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use another one of our transformers. 
and um, I'm going to uh, on these um, these stands. So I'm going to go again here, but I'm not going to flatten this time. So Don, why why might you not want to flatten? I thought flattening was the way to go. Uh, flattening, yeah, you know, Dean, I'm disappointed too. But um, because what we want to do is we're actually going to we actually need the XML hierarchy in this to help. Um, and then you're going to see what we're going to do is we're going to rip out the geometry, build the geometry, and then we're going to downstream we're going to flatten and then normalize and all those on all those good things. And this is just uh, to drive home that you know we do have XML based transformers as well. It's just not all done on the, uh, the reading side. So what we're going to do is we're going to say feature paths. We're going to say flatten. I don't want to flatten. Okay. And now we're going to run this again. And um, it's going to go lickety split, of course. Okay. So what do you get if you don't choose flatten? What, what's the You're going to see. You, you, you are going to see. You're going to be so excited, Dean. Okay. And anyway, believe that. Edge of my seas. I know. I know. I know. So is it snowing in Bulgaria? Oh, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. We, we, I think we need a snow flattener out here just to get around. That's right. That's right. And so here's what it is when it's not flattened. I still get two features if I go look at the visualizer because that's how many stands there are. But when I go to the, uh, the viewer, you can see that the entire stand now comes out as an XML fragment. Okay, so it took that one stand, made an XML document, and puts it on an attribute called XML fragment. Okay, so now what I can do is, um, the first thing I can do is I can simply um, use our friend the geometry replacer. Okay, and for each feature, I'm going to tell it, hey, the geometry to look for is GML. So as a feature flows by, it's going to snip out that feature, and everywhere where it finds the GML geometry, it's going to build it onto the feature. If there's multiples, it's going to make a multi-geometry and things like that. So now if I run it, I'm going to, the visualizer is going to pop up. Now there's actually going to be some geometry there. Um, oh, okay, so and Don, does it, does it matter what version of GML that stuff is? No, it doesn't matter. Oh, no. cool. We just figure it out. Yeah, and so now you can see. Now again, this is um, made-up data, not too exciting, but you can see that um, each of those actually was a multi-geometry. There was an inside point, and there was a polygon around, and then there was um, all the attributes um, there. Now, of course, I still don't have the attributes. All I've done is pulled out the geometry. Well, it turns out that in FME, we also have a bunch of transformers that help us work with XML. And I'm not going to go through them all, but there's a category here called XML. And you can see there is a whole bunch of transformers that I can drop into my workspace to, um, to get um, at those. So I'm going to use an XML flattener because I want to actually flatten that stand. Okay, and uh, here we go. And I'm going to say um, it comes from an attribute, of course. And the attribute type is XML fragment. And the element I want to match is stand. And in this case, um, you know, I'm going to add my ancestor attributes again because I, you know, you got to respect your ancestors and all that good That's stuff. Great. And um, even though in this case it's a high level, it's not really going to matter. But what the heck? And I'm going to say that now. And now when I run this again, you're going to see that um, what I'm going to get is um, the same thing. But now I have all the attributes. Okay. And I have a repeating group here, which um, I was going to show how to break apart. But um, we won't do that um, yeah, because we're getting low on time. But suffice it to say, we have something else called an XML fragmenter, which can be used within a, a, um, a workspace. So I could put an XML fragmenter here, OK, after anywhere I want um, to start to uh, fragment any of the um, XML that, that, that comes out of that. And um, so, you know, so now you can do part of it in the reader if you need to, or at any point within the, um, the workspace you, that you get XML, you can start to break it apart. Because you could get the XML. One thing we're seeing often is there's a database column that's XML. And so you're reading the database. One column has XML in it. Now you're, with FME, you're still able to rip it apart using these transformers and restructure it, get it in the way you want. So, so, that's, um, so there you go. Now back to our show. And um, that's um, reading XML with, uh, with GML. OK, so now it's time for another poll question, Mr. Stokes. So this time, it's what types of XML are important to you now and in the future? OK. Mm -hmm.
immediate future. That's right. That's right. Okay. So Mark's going to launch that goal, or he has launched that goal. Yes, he has. And oh, metadata. Okay, that's great. Great to know. Um, arbitrary is second. Um, for folks, if, if there's other types, um, what we'll do is we'll reach out to you and find out and get more information on those other types, just so that we uh, we are aware of those other types. So there you go. And um, yeah, people have, uh, have voted. They're thinking about it. And, um, of course, this one adds up to more than 100 percent because it's a multi-choice. So. Um, Okay, a couple more seconds here. Five, four. Uh, Don, are are we always open to uh, supporting new uh, AXML XML profiles? Oh, absolutely. Well, yeah, we love getting new uh, XML profiles. Doesn't matter what uh, what kind. Get us the data. So, why he's going to show it here? And well, it's a pretty even split with metadata um, definitely uh, taking the lead. Again, let us know what exactly you want to do with metadata. Um, there's um, nothing like a use a use case scenario that really helps us make sure that we build. Um, what's the email address? Oh, XML at safe.com is is good. You're going to see that in a minute. Okay, so thank you for that. Um, where can you find more information? And in this 50 minutes, this is all we have time for. So I I really understand that this is just a quick overview, but um, that's all we have time for. Um, so here's where you can get other information. Um, the FMEpedia. Um, fantastic place for for uh, samples, demos, troubleshooting, and that sort of thing. Okay, um, we also have uh, an FME channel on YouTube. So if you type www.youtube.com/fme-channel, then um, you're gonna you, you'll find a whole bunch of videos there. There's a number of XML ones there. We're always putting more. Um, if you get this deck, wherever you see yellow highlighted or, or yellow underscored links, those are actually links to movies and videos. So if you want to see again some of the stuff you've saw, seen here, or you want to go into more detail, get this deck, and it is actually a uh, an index into a bunch of other locations. So, for example, for a shortcut to the XML videos, you see that there. Okay, and um, webinars, um, webinars past, present, and future. Um, there you can see wsafe.com learning webinars. And um, for example, if you want to see the one we did in the past, we did a webinar on. Um, XML, SIM, and um, what was the other format? Multispeak. Multispeak. Thank you, Mark. We did that. That was using FME 2011. So the the webinar I expect when it's redone will be uh, will be quite a bit different. But uh, anyway, that gives you some more information on um, FME and um, XML and 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 how to have fun. Okay. So the XML challenge is still there. So please do send us data. Um, and let us know what you want to do with it, whether it's reading or writing XML. We um, we really love getting those. And, um, and Don, have really we ever had have we had any that we can't read? Um, Dean, you shouldn't ask that question. Yeah, the answer is yes. Um, I found there's some iTunes data that um, I haven't bothered to work with, but it's purely just nesting. So it's really just it has all the same tags, and you have to count nestings. And um, it wasn't really a use case that uh, it was one I made up, but but I mean, there have been a number that um, did definitely impact 2012, and have us to look at things that we needed to do for 2012. Like the the XML with GML geometry is a good example. So um, please do keep those coming, um, and um, we're gonna we're gonna look and and get back to you even quicker in 2012 than we did in 2011. Okay. So and um, of course, this is the first part of the XML webinar trilogy. Um, next week we're going to talk about writing, and we'll also cover updating XML. Um, so if you have metadata documents you need to produce or metadata documents you need to update, um, please tune in. Then you might actually find out who somebody who is somebody's father. So it could be like The Empire Strikes Back, could be a bit of a cliffhanger there. And um, and then the third the third in the webinar trilogy is um, has not yet been been planned, but uh, I know you're all as excited about that as I am. Um, well, maybe not that excited, but but almost okay. And, and like, again, like all the like sorry? any good like any good trilogy, it has to have at least four parts, right? Yeah, that's right. It has to have good. That's right. That's right. And again, there's the have where you can find all the information on webinars and sign up for these webinars. Um, and of course, we always want feedback on how we can make our webinars better. Okay. What yeah, or we could do a pre. Yeah, life before XML. Life before <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was dark. It was really dark before. Before XML was there, 
Yeah, and of course, in the future, the things we're always looking at is usability, and um, we we know have a good idea of what we're doing for 2013. We've actually started it, and it suffices to say that um, the need for an external editor to find paths will be gone in 2013. Um, again, making it even more usable than um, than than ever. Performance. I already touched briefly on that. Even SP1 of um, FME 2012 is faster than FME 2012. So. Um, and with that we just continue to work on that. Some more support for native XML formats. So if there's some XML formats out there you have that you would um, just like FME to use without having to use the, uh, the raw XML, let us know. And of course, we're driven a lot by um, your suggestions and your submissions to the XML challenge at xml at safe.com. And another poll, as we plan FME 2013, which new capability would you find most useful or valuable? So Mark's going to launch that poll. And then stay tuned because we have your chance to win free seats to the XML training. So Don, the XML nav navigation within Workbench, does that mean, like you said, not having to use an external editor? But you can Yeah, like a so you can actually be able to view the yeah. XML document right within Workbench, click on something you want, it'll automatically generate the paths for you. So you won't be copying and pasting and that sort of thing. So I'm really excited about that one. Um, it means I'll spend uh, much less time in Notepad++. And I'm sure my productivity is going to go way up when I'm working with um, XML documents. So, so there you go. So Mark's going to close that poll. And look at that. The number one thing by a landslide um, is, um, if this was an election, folks, it would be over. It's um, XML navigation within Workbench, 82% um, basically. And Juan has working on that now, and, uh, and he's pretty pleased about that because um, it would be very disappointing if you're already starting to work on something and nobody actually voted for it. <laughs> 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 so there you go. OK, so um, OK, now the giveaway, FML and XME. Eh, whoa, <laughs> try that one again. FME and XML reading. There's 40 free seats up for grabs. It's on May 16th at 8.30 till noon. Um, and so if you're interested in that, let us know. And we're going to do that with a poll. By um, answering this poll, I think you're actually entering in the draw. Isn't that how that works, Mark? Uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. So, so, um, so if you're interested in that, you want to take part in that, let us know. And if you want to take part in that but the time really doesn't work for you, let us know that too. Vote yes, and then when we contact you, say, I really want it, but I would really like a different time. I probably shouldn't say that, but I just did, and I'm not going to take it back. <laughs> OK, so uh, give me another five seconds here so everybody gets a chance. OK, yes or no. And there we go. 85%, oh, 84%, I don't want to exaggerate, um, want to take part in that poll. So Mark's going to hide that poll now. and. Um, we're almost at the end, okay? And look at that, we're right on, we're right on time. Okay, so what's next? Um, there's the FME 2012 World Tour, so uh, check that out, fme.ly, ly um, slash 2012 tour. And then, of course, we have our newsletters. And if you want to download the FME 2012 for, um, to, to test it out or to upgrade, there's the link. And um, we'd be happy to uh, follow up with you um, one on one to discuss your XML challenges as well. Okay, so of course um, today's webinar was recorded, and um, it'll be posted again. If you go to the the uh, Safe Webinar site, you will see it there as a pre-recorded webinar, and um, so you'll be able to you know watch this again and share it with folks. And it's there as um, something that um, you can all use later. Okay, and um, last but not least. Um, we want to thank you for your time. We know that you're all very, very busy. We know for some of you, this probably wasn't the most convenient time. Um, certainly wasn't the most convenient time for me, that's for sure. But anyway, um, and um, so there's our email addresses. Feel free to uh, send us email. Um, we have our Twitter accounts there as well. And um, Dean's picture sharper, and um, his um, Twitter's in bold. Um, there must be some, some, some subliminal message there that that, 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 that I'm being sent. But anyway, um, that's that. And last but not least, oh, we have some time for any questions you wanted to uh, 
there were a couple of questions about the interop, but is most of this stuff rolled back into the ESRI interop? Okay, the question is, what about the ESRI data interoperability extension and how much of this rolls into that? Um, with ArcGIS 10.1, all of it is going to roll. Yeah, AIXM 5.1, um, all the functionality you've seen here will be part of the ESRI ArcGIS data interoperability extension in 10.1. Yeah. So what's the uh, version of FME? Would that be approximate? That, that is 2012. Yeah, that's okay. probably going to be 2012 SP1 when it ships. Yeah. So an SP1 is out like next week or anyway, imminently. And so that's the version that's going to be. So we're pretty excited about that because um, this is really going to bring the data interoperability extension up to you know parity with, with FME. So one thing that we've been working hard on to do with ESRI or ESRI is to get those closer and closer in sync so that um, the, F, the full FME experience is also in the data interoperability extension. And yes, the data interoperability extension does include Workbench as well. So anything else, Mark? Or is that no, I think that's probably Okay, well, we're, it's about that time. So um, keep the questions coming. If you think of something where you, you, know, you, see, you, try, you download FME and try it on your XML data, please do um, err on the side of contacting us to uh, get you to help. Um, XML um, data can be um, you know, difficult to get started with, and FME is a pretty powerful tool, and um, a couple minutes of our time can, can literally save you hours, and, and that's what we're here for. So, so and, thanks uh, lots, to... Lots of oh, examples on, on FMEpedia if you're yep. trying to get started. You know, yeah, yep. and movies too. Yeah, so... And thanks, Dean. Thanks for staying up late. What time is it there? 7 p.m.? Yeah, it's, it's pretty late for me. I, I yeah, that's right. That's my nap yeah. time. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> well, we'll let Dean have a nap. And also, thanks for Mark and Juan for joining me this morning to uh, stand by and answer questions. So, yeah, thank you.